This gathering has been declared a riot. All persons leave the area now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally time to learn how to play Portland Occupied Zone. Open this up if I can. And the first thing we want to talk about is bricks. Let's talk about bricks. These are bricks. Okay. Uh, one of our goals in designing this game is that um, we mitigate not eliminate, but mitigate the amount of randomness. Um, the goal initially was to do it with no dice, and we almost made that happen, but uh, as you can see, there is one dice, but we made it, it's very minimalist dice, very minimal dice. Very tiny amount of dice, right? Just a four-sider, and we'll get to that later. That's, that's for the cops, right? We don't use that here. But if you are an activist, as in if you were a player, then you'll be doing everything with bricks, and uh, Bricks are some random, but uh, mitigate the amount of random. And uh, the concept behind this is, as you can see on the thing, um, they can land in one of three states. They can land like, let me zoom in. They can land like, like this on the flat side. They can land like this on the skinny side. Or on occasion, they can land on the end like this. Okay, and um, yes, one time I spent an entire day just rolling bricks of these exact dimensions and um, to try to figure out what the probability is of each one. It turns out that um, to land on this side, uh, the probability is about 58 percent, uh, 58, oh, wait a minute, hang on, that doesn't work, 68, yes, 68 percent on this side. Um, on this side, the, the ratio is about 30%, and the amount of time it will land on the end is, um, is about 2%. You'd think it would be much higher, you know, because this, the end is about, you know, you'd think maybe it would be half, but it's not, and I don't know why. Um, if there are any, many, many mathematicians out there, I would love it if you would tell me why. You'd think that uh, for a regular shape such as this, there would be math. There would be an algorithm where you could like put in the dimensions and be able to calculate like what the probability would be that you know one of these things landed on a certain edge. But um, I wasn't able to find one. It's a lot of cool stuff though. Uh, anyway, the way this works in the game is that uh, a flat brick is worth nothing. That's a miss. Okay, a side brick is worth one hit, and uh, an end brick is worth two hits. Okay. Um, there are no numbers to calculate. You just throw the bricks and you see if they are hits or if they are misses. And you can just count them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I hate, I hate crunching numbers in real life and I do not like to do them in my games. Okay. Um, the way this mitigates randomness is that, uh, um, the way this mitigates randomness is that you are allotted, right? A certain amount of bricks at the beginning of each game. They're provided to you by the um, by George Soros or whoever. You know, they just kind of show up one day in the morning, and uh, you go pick them up. And uh, these are um, kind of like action tokens. Where if you want to do something like if you want to uh, if you want to do looting, if you want to do burning, if you want to attack a person, you will pick from your pool how many bricks you want to commit, right, to that action. Say, um, if you say, well, I'm going to use all eight, right, then um, you're Chance of uh, uh, your certainty is almost to shoot. Wow, that was a really bad roll. I got one one hit, but certainty is just about uh, just about assured, right? Um, if you decide to you know be more cautious, then oh that still hit. Uh, then uh, then you can maybe only throw three, or if you know you can maybe only throw one. Um, the reason matters though is that uh, the bricks are also used for defense, right? And so um, if you decide you want to commit 100%, you throw all your bricks, boom, I got to bring down this building, I got to knock this guy out, whatever. Um, um, and you throw them all, right? Well, then you become defenseless uh, for the rest of that round. And so it's a good, uh, good trade-off, 
and uh, looting and burning and attacking people all uses bricks because it's Antifa and it makes sense. So, um, any questions on bricks? No, that's it. Oh, uh, one thing it says in the manual, um, there, are only, there are only 64 bricks in the entire game, I believe. Yes, 64. So if you play a very large game, then uh, there's a chance that uh, you will run out of bricks. And this is uh, by design. If you, if you run out of bricks, then you can't draw any more bricks. Because uh, bricks don't, uh, are not an abstract concept, right? In this game, they represent actual bricks that we would carry around with you and use them to knock people out. We use them to break store windows, right? And use them to start fires, which makes a little bit less sense. But um, the next thing is every character in the game will have one of these. Right? And this is your mental stability tracker. And it runs the gambit from uh, depressed to manic. Every, most, I should not, not every, most players start the game flat, right? And uh, as things happen to you in the game, um, uh, they will, you will either go up and go down. Um, if, they, if you reach the manic stage, right? This gets you plus one to all your stats, but there are only, there are only two stats. The only stats are, uh, Bricks and movement. So you would get, if you are manic, you get an extra brick every round. Um, and being manic will also give you bonuses to certain events in the game. And being depressed will, um, well, what happens to you when you become depressed in real life? Well, you become, a, you become a victim. Mostly of other players, you become a victim. You'll get a minus one to all your stats, less, uh, minus one bricks, minus one movement. And also, um, when we get into uh, each individual character, um, well, here's a good one. The struggle snuggle um, is automatic if uh, if Magic Pink's find you in, find you in a depressed state. She can um, love you up if you are depressed because you know you being in a very vulnerable state and having low self esteem, you of course not say no when the uh, pudgy girl in the tutu, uh, um, pudgy 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 person in the tutu. Um, uh, propositions you. She doesn't force you, right? Uh, when you're in a depressed state, you're uh, you're very willing. You're very amenable. Jack is well. All right, let's talk about Jack's track. Uh, there are, there are a couple tracks in these uh, that are unique. Um, Jack is a Jack is a psychopath, right? <laughs> Which means that uh, um, he has a a, a counter a, 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 a emotional stability tracker, but it has no effect. Being, uh, he doesn't, he's neither, he experiences neither highs nor lows, right? When he is depressed, he is, of course, uh, vulnerable and also being depressed um, uh, gives him some, uh, gives him some bonuses. He becomes, a, uh, he becomes very, becomes very malevolent when he's in his depressed state. And, uh, yeah, well, one of his things is, uh, I think we're going to go over this Tuesday, um, one of his powers, his first power when he gets uh, accrued uh, seven crapulence, is that he can uh, he can lower the mental stability of any um, of any character that he's next to uh, for free. All right, he just lowers it by one. And uh, on the second, at, at fourteen, he gets an extra brick, as you can see, and also he gets the uh, KYS uh, power. If you if you if you are already depressed. Um, and uh, Jack comes after you, then uh, let me get a, an injury to it. You will take, uh, you will, you will hurt yourself, hurt yourself, quote unquote, hurt yourself, right there. So you will take an injury. There's Kim here, and Kim is insane, right? Uh, Kim is manic depressive, as you can see, right? Uh, so she, her, her track only has four instead of the usual five. They are greatly amplified. So at depressed, she has negative two to everything. Sad, she has negative one. Manic, she has uh, plus one. And hypermanic, she gets plus two. Right? Uh, so it can never, ever be flat. She always has a modifier. And uh, so, well, plus two bricks, especially when you can get it very early in the game, which Kim has, like, you know, just two cards or one card even, or one event can get you all the way to hypermanic. And you get, what, her normal amount of bricks is five? That makes it seven. That's pretty good. Uh, anytime anybody burns uh, a building in the game, her mental stability goes up. Anytime anybody starts a fire. Uh, oh, yes. And um, Hipster Holocaust went hypermanic, which should be most of the time. Um, 
Uh, Kim gets plus one versus the police. The bacon icon on the red uh, means um, plus one hits versus the police. Uh, okay, at the very beginning of the game, um, this is only part of the board, the actual board. This is 30 centimeters to a side. So the actual board is um, quite large. It's, a, it's about a meter square. It's too big for this table. It's too big for this camera is the problem. And uh, this is how the game will start out, right? With a, with a building, right, on top of its footings, um, with a pile of loot in the building, um, and, uh, and a character who lives slash works here. Um, it's very it's very unclear. It's very ambiguous as to whether the characters live or work here. Uh, this is Magic Pink, so she she definitely works here. This is her business. Okay, not that it matters. She can burn her own business down and loot it. Um, there are two things that you can do with uh, with stores in in POZ Portland Occupied Zone. Um, you can loot it, and also you can burn it down. Okay, uh, both of these things are done with bricks. And to simplify things. Um, they each require three hits, right? So uh, what you probably want to do is you want to take some things out of the loot pile first before you burn it down, but that is your call. You can just, uh, you can YOLO charge the thing and just start, just start uh, lighting matches. Um, right, like I say, they are both accomplished with bricks. And to simplify things, they all require three or more hits, right? So you would pull out... Um, your bricks and say, well, I have uh, da, 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 da. I have eight bricks this round. I'm going to throw them all, and I'm going to try to loot this place, right? And you throw it, and I got, I lucked out. I lucked out. I actually got one, two, three, four, five hits, okay? And that will loot me one card. And I got Merdard, Merdard Artista, which we covered in the last video, which is a, a can of poop, can of human feces. What a great thing to have. So I'm going to put that in my loot pile. Um, and all these bricks, they're expended. I have, I have lost these bricks by throwing them. Um, they will not come back until next turn. If I had been slightly more lucky, if I had gotten one, two, three, four, five, six hits, then I would be able to get two things. right? And so in order to, in addition to the, uh, the Merida d'Artista, I would also be the proud owner of a can of orange spray paint. And what do I, well, spray paint cameras. Uh, take out or spray paint cans take out uh, security cameras, of course, right? By the same token, um, if you don't want to loot, you can also burn, and it works the exact same way. Um, let's say I'm, you just say I'm going to burn this place down, and you throw your bricks, and wow, zero hits. But let's pretend. Let's pretend. Let's pretend. Uh, let's pretend it hit. That's one, two, and that's three. So, boom, this building is on fire. Holy crap. Um, if I had rolled six, six hits, um, I could add another one. I uh, have never gotten more than six hits in a single roll, no matter how many uh, modifiers uh, there were. Uh, but it is theoretically possible. It is theoretically possible um, to burn down the entire building. It has never happened yet, but it, was within the, it, is, it is within the rules. Okay, so now what happens? The building is on fire. Well, if I was in the building when the when the fire happened, I will take one injury. You will take the number of injuries uh, uh, according to the strength of the fire, right? Boom. So if it were already up to three, you would take three injuries, which is very serious, very serious indeed. Um, yes. Uh, and subsequently, anybody who moves into this building, who walks into this building, they will also take damage. So like, like me, as an idiot, I burned this building down while I was inside. So I have, uh, I have hurt myself quite unintentionally. Uh, and there are a great many things that, uh, that will help you with, uh, with burning down buildings. Not a lot to help you with looting. Not very much at all, but a lot of things that help you with burning things down. Okay, and then the next time, boom, the, the next time three hits are scored, uh, then the building goes down. Building goes down. The building is burned down. Let me move all these off. We move that off, and we move that, and that shows the building in a burned down state, as you can see. Uh, and the grid has been restored, so this is now part of the regular map. And you may build here. Okay. 
me being magic pink, I need a place to sleep. So um, I'm going to build the unmade bed for myself in the ruins of my old store. So that makes sense? Of course it does. Oh yes, and I used needle pile and some tents for my homeless friends, my happy singing hobo friends, and another one like that, right? Or and it spills out in the middle of the street. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I have a tire fire there. Okay, right. But what happens to this? Okay, what happens to these that uh, did not get looted before the building went down? Well, the good news is these now go in the garbage, right? Um, there are two discards in the game in POZ. Um, one for things that have been consumed, one for things that you have used, right? Foods you have used, drugs you have snorted, um, right? Diseases you have, you have cured. Actually, that's not true. The disease is not going to go in the garbage. And um, you can rummage through, you can, you can retrieve these things every time you uh, visit the dumpster. Right. That's a, of course, the dumpster has to be a mechanic in the game. So uh, all these things are going to go in the garbage. And uh, they can be, they're retrievable um, on garbage day or any other day uh, that you visit the dumpster. Right? Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, can you put out fires? And the answer is yes, you can. Yes, you can, if you want to. Um, maybe you want to screw somebody up. Maybe you want a loot item and you don't want it to be uh, end up in the garbage. Um, put, put this back here. Here's the medic. Uh, he may look familiar to some of you. That's not focusing. Here we go. This is the medic. Um, he will do nothing. He will be at his friend's, you know, uh, auto, auto dealership and he'll be chilling out watching the news until, until somebody lights a fire. Somebody lights a fire right? Then the medic becomes very active, right? And he will attempt to put it out. Uh, and how is this accomplished? He will, he will, he moves in a direct, uh, a direct line. His AI moves in, move in a direct line to the nearest fire, uh, smallest number of steps. Um, and then for each turn that he spends, each uh, turn that the, uh, the medic spends um, undisturbed next to a building, um, you remove one fire token each round. Every time, every time it's his turn, um, you will take one of these off. Right? What does undisturbed mean? Well, it means if um, I run up and I attack him, the only thing you can do is attack him. Um, there's nothing else you can do with him. If you attack him, then he cannot put out fires that round because he's busy defending himself. Um, he is very, very good at defending himself. Uh, he rolls one of these plus two. So let's say he just did five points of damage to Magic Pink, which makes her pretty much dead right there. Uh, I think I think uh, I think six hits is what she has. So she'd be almost dead. Um, if you roll the four and plus the two, that's instant. That's one shot, one kill. Like you, you can kill. And when you are shot by the medic, you are dead. Right? There's no coming back. You can come back as another character, but this is um, you got the spicy bicep. You are no more. Uh, players can do this also uh, the same way that the medic does. So we're going to put uh, Magic Pink right there. Um, if she is undisturbed this round, she can take off one thing. Uh, and since we're talking about fire, it's time to talk about dumpsters. Um, dumpsters, the, the game starts with uh, four dumpsters in, all, in the, one of the, each of the four corners. Uh, you can push dumpsters at half your movement speed. Uh, dumpsters obstruct traffic. You cannot move past a dumpster. You have to move around it. You can't move through this wall either, but imagine. You know, imagine this was already built, burned down. Imagine this is burned down. It's burned down. All right, you would have to go around it. Okay. And you can light it on fire. Okay. Um, you do that, you accomplish it the same way you would start any other fire. Um, one, two, well, let's imagine that I hit. There we go. Three, and now this dumpster is on fire. Okay. When the dumpster's on fire, it has these bonuses. Plus four hits versus a character, plus four hits versus a police, and three hits to arson, right? And that as you that's automatically one of these. Right? Put 
but that's a bonus as a bonus to a roll, right? It's not just automatic. It's as a bonus to a roll. You say, okay, I'm going to push the dumpster into the uh, into this uh, into this building here, and then you throw your bricks. Boom, and I get one, two, three, four hits, plus the three from the dumpster. That's seven. Um, and this 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 building is now gone. It's gone, and the dumpster is now gone. And obviously, um, once the dumpster has been used to uh, uh, commit a crime, then uh, it is removed from the game. Oh, and it goes without saying that when a dumpster is on fire, you cannot loot it, um, because that would hurt very badly. Ah, yes. Let's talk about building the POZ. It's not all about lo looting and burning. Mostly, the purpose is land clearance, right? Because we need room to build um, the POZ, right? There are two kinds of cards that will be read out every day at the, at the beginning of every turn. And uh, I think I'll go back and talk about like uh, the turn cycle and everything when I talk about organization. But uh, every, uh, Antifa, Portland Antifa is going to have a leader. It will always have a leader. Um, by default, the leader is Magic Pink for no particular reason other than that she's pink. And uh, the leader will read out um, uh, an action card and a narrative card at the beginning of every round. Right? The difference between these are um, an action card is um, has to do with more with uh, uh, Antifa internal politics, right? And so it's more internal, and it will almost always have a vote. There will always, always, almost always be a vote for the players to take. Okay. Um, the narrative are they, these are external things. Right. These are things you have no control over, things that happen in the news, things that happen in politics, the weather, um, day and night cycles, stuff like that. Plots will come out of here. Right. Um, and almost always, um, well, there'll be a trade-off, right? So for example, this one, this, this, this card here is called uh, Talking Points. Uh, no, that's, that's a bad one. Let me do a better one. It's not a bad one. Uh, there are better ones. Okay, this is one that keeps popping up, so I'll, I'll spoil the uh, I'll spoil the joke for you. Uh, Common prosperity. This one's called a smartly dressed Asian man identifying himself as an agent of a certain rival foreign superpower has offered the POZ money, weapons, and logistics in exchange for influence and future favors. What brand of trashy hip hop liquor should we drink to celebrate? So the choice is uh, which brand of trashy hip hop liquor. And uh, they all do the same thing. They all add two population to the POZ. Well, what is population? Uh, population in its simplest form is tense. Okay, they all show up as tense. There are many tents. So anytime you uh, something increases your population, you're gonna put a tent on the board, right? Now, at the, um, at the beginning of each round, the uh, leader of the POZ will have the option to um, trade these up. And only up, you can never trade down. You can only trade up. Uh, so for example, if I have a little more tense here. We've got a whole bunch of homeless people. I mean, we don't want homeless people, so we're going to organize these homeless people into something more useful, right? Uh, I don't have enough. I still don't have enough. Here we go. Well, let's do this. Um, so I'm going to, as Magic Pink, as is my want, as is my privilege, I'm going to cash in four of these tents, and I'm going to build uh, the unmade bed right there for myself, which is worth four tents or four population, right? And then I can hang out here and uh, do my raunchy business with um, cigarettes and lube and whatever, whatever else is there, okay? Um, right, and that cost me four tenths, and so I put the, the four tenths back in the, back in the pile, and uh, these are free to spend again. So we're gonna draw some more cards, um, get some more population, right? Accrue more, and somebody else, okay, let's say somebody else becomes, um, Say Steve becomes uh, 
speaker of the POZ, right? He doesn't want this. So he can trade up to, and he's going to build a meth lab because meth lab is much more useful than an unmade bed. Right? He's going to build the meth lab. So that cost him this, which is worth four, and these, which are one, two, which one, one two, three, four. So all together, it works eight. Um, I have traded up, right? So I could never dismantle the meth lab and get myself um, an unmade bed and four tents. You can only trade up. That's the rule. Otherwise, it becomes too messy. Otherwise, it just, the place just fills up with tents is what happens. Okay. And then you can accrue, continue uh, accruing population, right? Uh, let's do that. Okay. And on a subsequent turn, um, who should we put in charge now? Uh, Jeff. Jeff is now in charge. Right. And what Jeff wants to do, Jeff wants to, well, you see these, um, these, these slots here. These are, these are worker placement. Uh, these were added at the last minute by popular demand. We, we realized that there was no, there were no NPCs in the game, and the NPCs are crowd pleasers, so we had to put them back in. Um, another thing, you can remove this population. We're going to burn down your tent, NPC guy, and now you live in the meth lab. Okay, and so these guys are required for running the meth lab. Okay, and late, late, late in the game, when you um, are fighting the police, the fascist police, the fascist Portland police, um, these will act as hit points. When, they, when he attacks the building, um, he automatically kills one guy. He automatically kills one NPC. And all the NPCs are gone, the building's gone. All right, so that is population. Is there anything else I need to say about population? I don't think so. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can build with population. There's the altar for doing witchcraft. He's got a drum circle. Uh, people's potato patch, um, a whole bunch of barricades. These will become necessary at the end of the game for holding off the police. Um, yeah, the skunkweed farm and a bunch of little ones, a uh, mysterious pile of bricks, tire fire, um, a pile of laundry, stuff like that. Right. Um, so is it about time to talk about organization? I think it's time to talk about organization. A lot of uh, this didn't this wasn't even mentioned in any of the trailers or anything, but we did a whole bunch into uh, and did a whole bunch of research uh, to help it out um, into uh, how you're uh, into Antifa organization, right? So when the game starts out. The game, uh, the game has started out, so I need to put, uh, I need to put this building back. Um, the speaker, the, the 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 person closest to the top of the rainbow, it goes pink, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, uh, turquoise, blue, purple. The person, to the, uh, the the player at the uh, at the top is the first speaker, and they will get the talking pillow. Where's the talking pillow? There it is. There it is. There's the talking pillow. Uh, they will get the talking pillow, and they will put the talking pillow onto their card. Uh, and right now, this doesn't do anything. Right now, this uh, this universe twenty five, the, the the ideology and theory. I'll get to that in just a minute. Right now, it doesn't do anything. But you put that here to indicate that you are the speaker. But what does that mean? Uh, the speaker means um, uh. It basically makes you the leader for that round. And it's extremely, well, just like uh, uh, Portland Occupy or Antifa, at the beginning, there is no leader. It's just whoever gets up and starts talking, right? If you've ever seen, like, uh, Occupy gatherings, it's just people just walk up and start talking, right? And that's how this works. Like, any player who walks across, any player who walks across the, um, oops, walks across the struggle pulpit here. At the, the very first round, the beginning of the game, the speaker will place the struggle pulpit somewhere on the board. It doesn't matter where. Um, this is your base of operations until you take over the courthouse, right? Uh, and so uh, anybody walking across the struggle pulpit becomes, okay, there, I'm here now. I take the pillow. I'm going to put that on my board, right? Now I'm the speaker. Um, and what does the speaker do? Okay, the speaker at the beginning of every round, they will place, they can reorganize the POZ, they can move the tents around, they can cash the tents in 
for um, other things, right? Uh, like you just saw. Um, and also they read out all the cards and they proctor all the votes. So you're gonna, they're gonna, um, they're gonna read out the action card and they're gonna hold the vote, right? And then they're gonna read out the uh, the narrative card and they're gonna hold the vote. And at the end of the game, they're gonna move the police and the medic. They're gonna move the police and the medic. Here are the police and the medic. It'll be the end. Um, also, if ever there is a tie uh, in voting or any other kind of tie. Um, it's specified in the manual which, uh, which, which, uh, which events require a tiebreaker, um, but uh, the speaker will break that tie. Now, um, toward the middle, I guess the middle of the game, um, the Portland police are very happy to allow you to um, screw around and even to burn things down um, as long as you are, as long as you don't target them, right? Just like in real life. Um, as soon as you start targeting them, things become very serious very fast. Let me get out the center square. Kaboom. And that's made to look kind of sort of like Pioneer Courthouse Square, even though Pioneer Courthouse Square is not in Southeast Portland. Just, I guess don't think too much about it. And that is where the courthouse goes, right there. This is a this is an old one. A uh, newer version of the courthouse will have um, places where it clearly indicates where the medic and the and Officer Jackson. This is Officer Jackson, where the medic and Officer Jackson should uh, should go, should begin in the courthouse. Uh, I believe it goes like yes, yes. This is the correct direction, right there. Okay, as you can see, this uh, building can also be burned down, right right here. It can only been be burned down. Officer Jackson right here is the second strongest NPC after the medic. Um, he will attack you. All right, he will hunt the uh, the most crapulent player. I'll get. I guess I should have covered crapulence first. He will attack the most crapulent player. Um, and uh, but you can you can hit him back and you can gang up on him and you can. It's not that hard to defeat him. Um, it requires you. You need some good loot and you need some luck to get him to take him down. But once he's down, then everybody can gang up. You are able to burn the courthouse down only when, um, if you defeat Officer Jackson, he will be out of pet play for one round, right? And during that round, go ham. Just burn this thing down. Okay. Four hits. Boom, boom, boom. Will eliminate the courthouse. Right. And that courthouse is gone. All right, and you get this for free. The Portland Commune is worth eight points, all right? And this is your new base of operations. As soon as this happens, so plan in advance. As soon as you burn down the courthouse, the game changes, all right? You're going to stop drawing these cards, the, uh, the narrative cards, and you're going to start drawing the Battle of Hawthorne cards because the police are going to start attacking you. And they're going to start attacking you a lot. Okay. Uh, every round from this point on, lots of okay, lots of things happen when this when this change takes place. First of all, you start drawing from the Battle of Hawthorne deck and not the narrative deck. This is the end game. The second thing is the uh, the police will get stronger and there will be more of them. So the riot police are going to start showing up at the at the corner, the edge of the board. This is not the edge of the board, obviously. They're going to start showing up at the edge of the board. Um, every round, and uh, they're going to start um, attacking you. If you are able to survive, uh, we're not going to use all these cards, just, um, I believe, 12 of them. You only have to survive for 12 rounds, which is not, well, it is hard, but you will, you will be losing ground. But uh, all you have to do is hold out. If you hold out, if the Portland Commune holds out until the, uh, until the last card is drawn, uh, then, you, then Antifa wins. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen is the politics of uh, the Portland Occupied Zone are going to change also. Um, they're also going to become very serious. So no more, no more hippy-dippy, no more walk up and start talking. Um, from now on, the POZ, whoever was speaker at the time that the, uh, the courthouse went down, 
is now a dictator. Where did the dictator thing go? Hang on. Okay, so if you were speaker and you had the talking pillow, when the courthouse burned down, you were now the dictator. Okay, and you get the tin pot. You get the tin pot instead of the talking pillow. Okay, what, what, what difference does this make? The difference is, uh, first of all, the, um, the struggle pulpit is removed from the game. No more struggle pulpit. You can no longer become a uh, leader of the POZ, uh, a leader of Portland Ant Antifa, uh, by walking across the thing. You are dictator's dictator for life. And the only way this can change hands now is by violence. You have to attack the dictator and uh, take the tin pot for yourself. Uh, the other thing that will happen is that this thing, this white thing that everybody has, uh, is called ideology and theory. And it is a bonus power um, uh, in most cases for the entire, for all the players, but uh, in some cases not for all the players, which basically represents how this, how Portland Antifa would be run if this character was in charge. Um, and uh, we tried to make them as uh, character specific as possible. So when Magic Pink is in charge of the POZ, uh, people with higher crapulence, I, I will, I will get to crapulence in just a sec, um, uh, will, um, people who are higher status, um, uh, it is easier for them to attack and defeat people of lower status. Okay. And uh, so at the end of the, uh, when the last narrative card is drawn, whoever holds the tin pot, whoever is the dictator, is the winner. So it's semi-cooperative. Uh, you need to work together to get to survive, basically. But only one of you can win. So you gotta, you know, you gotta think about: Do I attack this guy? I don't like the betrayal mechanics, where uh, where they tell you that you're the betrayer. I want a mechanic that incentivizes you to betray. So that's the you know, there can be only one. You have to work together, but there can be only one. Okay, um, hmm, I made a big mess here. Crapulence is your personal score. Um, and it's at the edge of the board. There are three tiles that have the crapulence uh, marker on it. Okay, and every player will have a, a little thing and you just move it up as you accrue more crapulence. Crapulence is a measure of what a nasty person you are. And there are many uh, different ways to accrue crapulence and uh, it is specific to every character. If you look on the back of the character board, um, under scoring, right? For every fire lit, uh, for every cop and medic defeated, uh, for every player you knock out, um, every time grand larceny, it was originally called, every time you uh, three or more items are looted in a single action, so if you throw a nine, basically, um, and then Pink's bonus one is uh, she gets uh, one for every character snuggled, and it's in bold here because she only she gets that. Uh, and you get uh, eight population for every building burned down. So every time you, uh, so whenever you burn this down, when you burn this down, you would get eight immediately, and uh, the speaker or dictator of the POZ will be able to uh, distribute that, put it down. Okay, so that's how you score. Uh, every time you do one of these things, your thing moves up, bing, 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 bing. And the stars here indicate, I apologize, this is only a third of the board. Um, every time you get a power up, power up. I, I, need, I didn't come up with a good name for the just character powers. They should be called something more uh, immersive. Um, on your player board, uh, you will see that you have one, two, three, four, five character powers. I think everybody has exactly five. I think there one, might be one person who has more. The one with the star in the corner, this is automatic. So uh, Magic Pink, this is her thing. She's able to struggle snuggle um, from the beginning of the game. Anytime somebody is uh, um, depressed or unconscious. And if the, uh, if the uh, unmade bed, which I showed you before several times, if the unmade bed is in play, then she is able to... Um, Molest you, basically. Molest you. Nom, 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 And every time she does that, she gets um, another crapulence point. Uh, gender fluidity. Pink may interpret any gender-specific specific game rule or effect any way she likes. Uh, by default, she is, she is female. Uh, there, are several, um, there are several events in the game that affect 
either only boys or only girls, and uh, she can interpret. She can she she can choose to be a girl on that day if she wants to, just by announcing it. Doesn't even have to announce it in advance. Um, right uh, at fourteen, she gets uh, another brick right here. At fourteen, everybody gets another brick. At twenty-eight, everybody gets another brick. It goes up to thirty. Um, pink suffers no mal malice from diseases. Uh, I'll get to diseases in just a sec right here. I'll do diseases next. Uh, no malice from diseases, but they still take up space. Um, uh, 20 on poster campaign. Pink may discard three loot items and raise the mental stability, stability of all the characters by one level. Everybody goes up one. Um, and uh, breeding pits at the top level. Pink may also snuggle players as above whose mental stability is... Depressed, sad, or flat. So tripling, theoretically, the not, anybody who is not happy, right? She may snuggle them for free, which means she takes them to a, her secret lair and just loves them up. Okay, and when that happens, she'll, um, I guess her scare score goes up very quickly, even though she's already close to the top. Um, if you lose crapulence, you lose these points. Um, how do you lose crapulence? You lose crapulence, well, the, the main way is by being arrested, is how you lose crapulence. Um, I'll go into getting arrested probably in a subsequent video. Um, combat and being arrested is probably going to be its own thing. Loot, combat, and getting arrested is a, a big topic for another game. This is just a broad game concept. So what was next? Oh, yes, diseases. Which does, which does, which does play into, uh, uh, as you perhaps uh, noticed when the courthouse was there, that there's a jail here, a disgusting jail with pee all over the floor. And look at that disgusting bed. Ooh. Um, without getting into combat, like I said, I don't want to today. Um, every character has um, an injury track. I believe everybody has five except for Jorge who has six because he is a large boy. Okay, you start with zero and every time you take an injury, you just move the thing up, right? Um, when you get past your last injury, you are dead. This isn't dead, this is dead, right? Okay, what happens to you when you die uh, depends on... Uh, who inflicted your last injury, right? If Officer Jackson inflicts your last injury and it is not during the Battle of Hawthorne, then you go to jail, okay? You go to jail, you go jail, okay? And what happens when you go to jail is you will, you will, you will, you will contract a disease, okay? Every time you contract a disease, uh, where to put the diseases? They're around here somewhere. So here are the diseases. Um, there are only, well, it's, it's technically seven. Allison starts with the disease. That's her power. She has starts with scabies. But there are uh, six additional optional diseases. Um, viral hepatitis, the coof, genital centipedes, monkeypox, AIDS, and dysentery that you may contract from prison. Um, uh, what happens when you get uh, a disease is the disease will take up one of your slots right here. You have four um, equipment slots. This is a, you put uh, loot items here, right? And this will, at the very least, it's going to take up space, right? This is congratulations, you now have dysentery. This item is cursed. Place in the equipment slot until cured and transmitted to another player. Okay, so after you have gotten a disease, uh, you can spread it to other players. Well, how do you do that? Um, if you attack them and win, if you fight them and win, they don't have to get knocked out or anything, but if you fight them and win, you spread your, uh, instead of inflicting injuries on them, you can, ch I am getting into combat. That's how combat works. Um, you can choose to uh, spread your disease to them, in which case, you know, they take your disease and you are disease free or relatively, if you have one fewer disease. Um, and uh, well, there are goals that some characters have to get all the diseases you get extra points for contracting, for filling up on diseases, and all kinds of things like that. Um, also, um, if you are snuggled by Magic Pink, 
Um, she will spread one of her many diseases to you. Oh, no, 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 no. If she, uh, she can spread a disease to you, or if she does not have a disease, you will just contract one uh, automatically from her filthy mattress because that is, it is, that, it is so filthy. Uh, okay, and uh, well, how do we get rid of diseases? Well, several ways. Um, you know, without getting too far into loot, because that's kind of a big subject, suffice to say that there are eight, well, nine, ten, really, different kinds of loot, and they are specific to the building that they come from, right? So uh, if you were at the pizza parlor, then it's going to be mostly food. It's going to be food-related cheese pizza, ping pong paddle, $65,000 hot dog, and creepy things that Steve might have, such as chloroform soaked rags, terrifying sculpture, uh, electric nipple clamps, surgical implements, toddler body bag, crotchless leather pants, right? Things that you are likely to find um, in Steve's place, okay? Um, and one of these locations is the Grand Herpetic. The Grand Herpetic is in the southeast. Um, and the Grand Herpetic is where uh, it is a tattoo parlor and a methadone clinic. And it is full of all kinds of medical things. Like it's got methadone, uh, rusty tattoo needle, syringe, blood drive cookie, medicine, just heals you, bottle of tattoo ink. Uh, and one of the things you can get is, uh, can you see that? Why is this focusing? Joe's horse paste. You see Joe's horse paste. Um, Joe's horse paste in, uh, cures one disease. It will it remove it. Well, just, it puts it back in the deck. You can... You can, you can acquire this disease later. Um, and, uh, well, what happens? That's all fine and good, but what if the Grand Herpetic is already burned down? That can happen. Um, if it does happen, there's another deck of cards. If it does happen, uh, then um, if you have the meth lab built, then uh, you can also make generic horse paste, right, which does the exact same thing as Joe's horse paste. Um, right, so what is there left to do? I need to talk about uh, combat in detail. I need to talk about loot in detail. Oh, let's just talk about loot. Let's do loot. Let's do loot. Um, uh, like I said, there are... Well, let's go through the locations, first of all, because um, that is uh, germane to the discussion. There are... Nine different locations, one of which is the courthouse. Okay, so courthouse you already saw. Right, that's where the police come from, and that's where the jail is. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, and these all go around in rainbow order. For reasons, because um, I'm autistic that way. Uh, this is Filthy Rags. Fil filthy Rags is the domain of Allison, the Trustafarian. She lives at Filthy Rags. And... Um, the loot at Filthy Rags is mostly clothes, mostly clothing. So, uh, da, 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 da. here's the Filthy Rags deck. It has things like the unisex dashiki, and the patchwork overalls, and uh, the vinyl ninja costume, and the vintage prom dress, and a straight razor for some reason. And patchouli oil, because of course, uh, a snug pantsuit. Um, no, that's not. That's not one of them. Uh, pinking shears, etc., etc. Um, there are eighteen. There are eighteen uh, items in each location. Okay. Um, next up, going. Um, well, you saw. Uh, you saw Meredith Artista already. That's uh, that's the next one. That's the top. Uh, upper right is the the head shop. The head shop is where Jeff lives. Okay. And head shop is mostly drugs. Let's see the head shop loot. Um, it's called Peace or Head Shop or the Dispensary. It doesn't have a name. It just goes. It's just the peace symbol because you know Jeff is very avant garde like that. Oops. Here it is, here it is. Um, and what'll be in, uh, it'll be Crack, and uh, what, Blue Dream, 
bottled diazepam, angel dust. Angel dust is really strong. Look how strong the angel dust is. Uh, fentanyl, um, mostly drugs, almost entirely drugs. Is there anything that isn't drugs? Is there anything that isn't drugs? Um, no, there's no not drugs. This is all drugs. And the head shop and the dispensary. Okay, going south from the dispensary is... Um, here it is. Pizza. Uh, if you were a... If you took a deep dive into something that I can't talk about, then... Uh, uh, then you will recognize the, uh, the logo on the pizza place. And uh, yes, what you will find in pizza, pizza is the domain of Steve. Uh, and what you will find in pizza is chloroform soak rag, $65,000 hot dog, cheese pizza to serve man, uh, ping pong paddle, terrifying sculpture, Epstein's vault, remember that from the last game, uh, electric nipple clamps, more pizza, um, crotched leather pants, amyl nitrate, surgical implements, and toddler body bag. I don't think that's everything. That's most of it. Maybe it is. Okay, and south from there is the Grand Herpetic. Grand Herpetic is medicine, tattoo things, and drugs. Um, like actual useful medicine, not, uh, not, not recreational drugs. So it's got Joe's horse paste, methadone, rusty tattoo needle, syringe, blood drive cookie, syringe, medicine, um, bleach, Happy pills, jug of urine, because of course, um, jug of urine causes uh, befoulments, which is something I haven't covered yet. It's a mostly a Jeff character power, but uh, 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 cleaning implements um, and most of these things, all the cleaning supplies. If you have the syringe, and the syringe of course is going to be weapon of choice for anybody playing Kim. Uh, this is Kim's domain. Kim lives at the Grand Herpetic. Um, if you have the syringe, then um, you see down here, right? You can inject people with cleaning supplies, urine, uh, bleach, and or drugs. Uh, and also does damage. So it's, a, it's quite a powerful weapon, as long as you have like additional loot to inject into people. Uh, and that is the southeast, moving one, one area to the west. Uh, you're going to come to uh, Captain Asshole's Steampunk Absinthe Distillery and the Teatre d'Absurde. This is the um, this is getting into like the posh area of Hawthorne, and that is where um, that is where ja uh, Jack lives. And what you find here is um, pretentious crap. Is what you find here. Just all kinds of pretentious nonsense because you know it is a theater and this is Jack right uh, so uh, this is where you will start finding um, works uh, dramatic works right like King Ubu and uh, where's another one uh, the gas heart um, beat poetry is that all that might be all oh sorry waiting for Godot right just really pretentious like absurdist and uh, uh, postmodern literature and what these do is, um, they, these will increase your, the population of the POZ rapidly because everybody loves a good performance. But there is also, there's usually a, uh, a side effect, as in because these are mostly horrible, they're going to lower the mental stability of players. Right. Yes, all of these lower mental stability. Um, if you don't know what King Ubu is, <laughs> look it up. It's on YouTube. It looks like 4chan from the 1890s. It's just awful garbage but also very funny it's weird that it exists uh, bowler hat uh, mustache wax sea chest on pocket watch pastis leftover canapes sour belgian lambic uh, velvet waistcoat absinthe absinthe a gothic frock coat an absinthe spoon extract of wormwood and a fire axe fire axe is a uh, surprisingly there is a very strong weapon uh, hidden in the theater Usually, for a weapon this strong, you have to go to the, uh, you have to, you have to, uh, 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 what, cook it at the meth lab. Uh, right. So that is south. Going one to the west again, uh, you'll come to Hexenhausen, and Hexenhausen is where uh, this is where Lilith hangs out, and that is Lilith right there. 
and it just gets even more pretentious. Right. So this is the feminist bookstore, partly inspired by the feminist bookstore in, uh, uh, in Portlandia. And uh, there are a lot of books here, right? Um, Deconstructing Constructionism, The Meandering Chautauqua, The Confusing Diatribe, The Violent Manifesto. There's The Society of, of Cutting Up Men, which for some reason appears in all our games. Um, uh, resume guiding guide writing for sex workers and uh, Ginsburg the musical is in here somewhere let's see if I know uh, socialist newspaper lots of things to read um, fewer of these come with a cost a mental cost but then a uh, handful of crappy slogan buttons male tears bike lock obscenely biological pink hat manish shoulder pads male tears again AIDS quilt super shiro costume a feminist sandwich gender-neutral hygiene product, and a handmade statement ne necklace. Okay, and that is, oh, one more, one more. There's one more. Uh, going to the north of Hexenhausen, you will end up at um, the People's Food Exchange. And the People's Food Exchange is where Jorge lives because he likes to be around the food. Uh, and this is mostly food stuff. And food stuff is mostly for uh, healing. So it's going to be all, all or mostly food, but also some grocery store stuff. So a humanely raised hummus. And you can see down here that these will heal you. Uh, a sustainable spaghetti, free range turnip, heirloom carrot, um, soy, soy, bonus from soy. Frying pan, concrete milkshake was a weapon. Concrete milkshake is a weapon. Uh, Cruelty-free cricket chips, more soy, can of soup, which is also a weapon. Um, hippie ice cream, shopping cart, not a weapon. This is uh, for carrying your stuff in. Uh, free trade quinoa, uh, a lighter, uh, justice juice, uh, or organic kale chips, more soy, and more justice juice. And uh, that is the entire map. Uh, right, so um, as you can see, um, I have touched on like a, a lot of elements of the combat system. Oh, 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 also the homebrew deck. Homebrew deck. Homebrew deck. These are things that uh, you cannot find, but you can make. Right? So um, math, jug of urine, the bludgeon of tolerance. Boogie board, riot shield, uh, jug of urine again. People's potato comes from the potato patch. Skunkweed comes from the skunkweed farm, which is the thing you can build. Um, the chunker bike. If you're not from Portland, you may have no idea what that is. I'm gonna have to. Uh, bagpipe flamethrower, same deal. Uh, Anti-bullying bat. The potato cannon. And uh, what? Horse paste. And the rest is just drugs. Dr the rest is just drugs and potatoes. Uh, would like to sp expand on the uh, the craftable loot at uh, some other date, but uh, this is already almost 400 cards, and it was enough. It was enough cards. Um, right. So, without without uh, going into great detail about uh, about combat, um, most of well, not most, but many of these things. Um, you can, well, as you can see, uh, the handmade statement necklace says that it is an accessory with a little tiara here. It's a magic pink's tiara right there. And it will go in your accessory slot right there. Right? And it gives you a bonus to um, one bricks at the beginning of each turn. Um, what else do I have here? Um, I have a super hero costume, which is an apparel, which is yellow, which goes into the apparel right here. And that gives me Plus one defense, the little helmet with the pink, the little pink helmet with the flower on his defense. Plus one against the cops, and because they're all male, and um, this uh, the crying magic pink uh, represents uh, injuries to player characters. So I get um, anytime I attack a male identifying player character, um, I get one additional hit. Um, and a weapon, there's a weapon. Is a bike lock. Bike lock is a pretty strong. It used to be stronger. It was way overpowered, uh, but that gives you plus one versus players and plus one versus police. Crying magic pink means player. Um, all players, unless 
otherwise indicated as here. And uh, the bacon means uh, plus one versus the police. Uh, and there are a great many modifiers, which uh, when I do when I do combat, which I guess has to be its own video, um, because it is easy. The combat is very easy, but um, people are used to combat working a different way than it does here, so they get um, they get confused. They're used to the totals on the dice, like comparing totals on dice, and there are no totals, and there are no dice. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's enough for today. Uh, let me edit this and shoot it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's everybody. Let me get this uploaded.